something uh, which uh, this again this this particular paper what dr sharon is going to discuss is what we need in our country is to have a healthy collaboration of uh, the pharma with the clinicians or clinician scientists because every time they bring in a drug many times uh, these drugs are launched without much of background and everything is just given most of the details are just given uh, which is copy paste from something which is published in some uh, some insignificant journals so uh, this uh, new product uh, which the sipla wanted they wanted uh, sharon to work on this mucin in uh, and create an experiment of uh, how this hyperosmolytic hyperosmolar stress would uh, behave in this product and uh, this is something uh, which she will discuss uh, in this session thank you sir thank you for including me in this session the talks till now have been brilliant um, so very often what happens with all of us is that we are thrown you know so many different drops uh, which we see every day and it's very difficult to decide which would work for our patients which are toxic which are you know how do you decide we are looking at physical chemicals there are so many additives so many different constituents and sometimes it's very diff difficult for us to choose so in our tier firm and I'm, i'm sure i don't need to highlight this but along with because the aqueous and lipids are something which are highlighted all the time we only think of replenishing or taking those into consideration but the mucin in our tier film is not only at the layer of the cornea along the microvilli but there are also soluble mucins which help the tear film be more stable and along with the lipids they are an extremely important constituent so some of the newer uh, medications the lubricants which are available to us are you know those which help with the mucin stability the mucin replenishment and therefore you know evaluating them would really help and help us guide our treatment this was the paper we recently published in the uh, dry eye special issue of the ijo so the rationale of this study as i was saying is that we know that with dryness there's a lot of inflammatory stress which comes up Uh, which is triggered by the nf kappa beta pathway and irrespective of what kind of dry eye we have over time because of the inflammatory stress there's a loss of the conjunctival goblet cells which get affected this leads to uh, a altered uh, uh, dry eye uh, altered tear film stability and dry eye now in an experiment if we have to check it then we need to have markers for uh, which show us that there is a hyperosmotic stress and nfat5 is one of these markers how do we induce this hyperosmolar stress in the experiment in the in the lab is by using sodium chloride which is applied on the cells and the corneal tissues to try and stimulate this right now usually when we're looking at various experiments the most common uh, experiments we do are on human co corneal epithelial cells cultured cells and conjunctival epithelial corneal uh, cells but we do know that sometimes that may not be available to us or it's not easy to culture so here we took it a little different we did what is called ex vivo so we have in vivo which is in the body in vitro which is lab in the petri dish and this is ex vivo which is tissue which is taken from the human body and then grown and used for the experiment so these are ex vivo corneal scleral rims and the idea was that we try and find out how this combination which is a very common combination you'd have heard polyethylene glycol with propylene glycol uh, how it affects in the mucin secretion so this was our purpose to develop this model the ex vivo model uh, by uh, using the donor corneal scleral rims and then test out this drop to see how it affects not only in reducing the hyperosmolar stress but also its effect on the claimed mucin which is there so we we took eight corneal scleral rims which are you know well, once we've done the penetrating keratoplasty these rims are left behind so we use those rims they were cut into equal sized pieces transferred into uh, a, a special medium the dmem medium and incubated and then using qpcr and elisa we used you know incubated them and then used it to analyze the supernatant coming from that we also match it we use the conjunctival and corneal epithelial cells but for this uh, presentation i'm just talking about the corneal scleral rim once we did that we saw that surprisingly in the human corneal epithelial cells because we're looking at mucin mucin expression the human corneal epithelial cells actually had very low mucin expression which is expected because they don't have goblet cells so there's no mucin coming the con conjunctival corneal uh, uh, conjunctival epithelial cells also showed a fairly low mucin but the rims showed much higher mucin so obviously it's a good platform for us to check what we are 
doing. We then applied the PEG PG drops on those uh, conoscleral rim explants which we have incubated and monitored them with the NFAT which is the hyperosmolar stress marker and the MUC5 and MUC16 which are our markers for mucin production. Right. Now these, these uh, I'm not sure all the results from the study but the most important are these two graphs, these two sets of slides which this one shows the effect of this drop on the hyperosmolar stress marker and the mucin. So in the first graph, if you just, I don't have a marker here, a pointer. So if you see the first one, the NFAT, which is the hyperosmolar stress marker, you have the control. And with the hyperosmolar stress, this increases. With the 1% peg drops, which is what is available to us, there's a significant reduction. Note that if we increase it too much, that's also not good. And that shows the toxicity which increased concentration of drops can do. But very interestingly, once we have the peg drops and uh, it shows the increased expression of the mucin markers, both the MUC5 and MUC16. So it implies that these drops do have an effect on reducing the hyperosmotic stress response. And it also, if you, if you see this one, there's a rescue effect. So once there's an increase in the osmolarity, with these drops, we can try to maintain the level of osmolarity, if not reduce it. The second thing is also uh, important that we can rescue it from a process where it has increased and also help to maintain that hyper, uh, mucin secretion and the hyperosmolar stress response. So collectively, you know, we can show that Medications which contain this, and this was, uh, it's in the paper, so this is Flogel Ultra, but uh, otherwise, generally, this is what this group of medications is expected to do, and we now know how it does it, because otherwise, you know, we were just going by what is there in those papers. So, so one of I the end. biggest, sorry, one of the biggest challenges uh, uh, we all face is companies come up and give a product with that five, six different combinations. Uh, why this model is important is they say that, okay, uh, Optiv does not have this, I will add this. Or somebody okay. else doesn't have it, I will add it. So uh, when it so happened that uh, some medical affairs from Sipla had come and said, sir, you should write this product. We have added so many things. I said, this is not a cocktail which has so many things and it gives you that effect. See, you are picking up things which others don't have it. Then they ask the question, which I feel a lot of companies should ask and all of your clinicians should ask, have you really tested that whatever you have put? I think this has polyethyl uh, uh, glycol uh, and propylene glycol, sodium hyaluronate. So, and uh, it has the HP gore. So you have, it's a mix of, say, a cysteine ultra with uh, uh, refreshed tears and multiple things. Then they said, okay, can we conduct an experiment to do it? And there are good models. In the past, to create this experiment, we had to do it on a rabbit or one of those animals, use it, sacrifice it, and all that. Now we have fantastic models where you can do everything on a Petri dish. And you can create any model you want. You want to create a dry eye model. You want to create a keratoconic model. And all you need to do is from companies that put those drops and see. In that way, I think they have passed the test that whatever the beautiful combination they've created. One is it creates mucin and one other one it, it holds the lipids. That means it is one where you can use it both for evaporative and uh, and uh, aqueous deficient dryer. Because the challenge for us is sometimes you need something for aqueous, something for lipid, uh, something which improves the lipid. So in that way, I think you have passed that test and this is a published work what I'm speaking. But most important thing is that you also have to more other products you know just Anything don't mix things up and uh, it's not a culinary kitchen where you can mix and you expect it to work uh, thank you any anything uh, what is the role of that hp gore in that uh, means regarding the mucin secretion huh. yeah, so HP is the anthony does exactly this, yeah? so how how it will affect the mucin secretion or mucin expression in that way dr anthony putin does this here no Polyethylene glycol and PG. Both will take care of yeah. Huh. Huh. 
बिकॉज वॉट आई नो इज एच पी गोर इज रिलेटेड टू विस्कोसिटी एंड बाइंडिंग एजी सो यू कैन इंक्रीज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टू इंक्रीज दिस्कोसिटी गोर इज नेसेसरी इफ यू आर होल्डिंग इफ यू आर पुटिंग मोर प्रोडक्ट इन टू इट इफ यू आर पुटिंग सोडियम हाइलोरनेट यू आर पी जी बाई इट सेल्फ दे आर एक्सट्रीमली नॉटी वंस like you know she showed one slide if you put more of it they start doing opposite of what they are supposed to do but this holds them it's like a policeman it holds them in a uh, in a in a nice ring so that they don't go out of it but what happens is that company should be always able to uh, promote these kind of experiment which will tell us whether it's worked or not